When a woman lives long enough, menopause is 100% guaranteed. And if all of you here today represented the entire female population, one in three of you will be in menopause next year. That's pretty much all of you sitting just over there. So you probably already know someone menopausal, a friend, a family worker, a co-worker, maybe even your partner. And just so that we're on the same page, natural menopause occurs when a woman has not had a menstrual cycle for 12 months. It usually occurs between the ages of 45 to 55 when the ovaries stop making the hormone estrogen. Now, there's also a specific group of women who go through early menopause because of surgery to remove the ovaries, a result of medical treatment or medical condition, or their genetics. They also have their own unique battles and challenges. But overall, it's good news, because women, on average, outlive men by five years. She's quite likely to spend a third of her life in menopause, except it's with a lower quality of life. So I want to share with you today some of the reasons why and what you can do about it. So as a medical doctor and a GP, my window into menopause started 15 years ago when I started using cosmetic skin treatments to treat new acne scars in women over the age of 40. They were experiencing acne breakouts for the first time in their entire lives. Please raise your hands if you've heard that menopause is puberty in reverse. Thank you, I see some. Except this time you have wrinkles, sagging skin, and that awkward bit of hair on your chin. So the skin is the most visible and vulnerable manifestation of menopause. On the one hand, when estrogen hits the floor, you may find yourself in a revolving door between your dermatologist and your gynecologist. So on the one hand, you've got the estrogen deficient skin. On the other hand, you have the genitourinary syndrome of menopause. That's a medical term for low libido, genital itching, bladder symptoms, and much more. But don't worry. It turns out that the visible parts of your skin, like your face, neck, arms, and legs, are mostly prone to external exposures, such as the sun, smoking, poor sleep, and chronic stress. So put on your hat, slap on your sunscreen and moisturizer, and get some glute sleep. And guess what? Good sleep may even reverse your biological age by two and a half years. Now, for your intimate parts, speak to your gynecologist, because they have a treasure trove of solutions for you, if only you dare bring it up. So let's not be awkward. Bring it up. Now, estrogen isn't just skin deep. Like a lock and key, we have in every single cell a receptor for the estrogen key. It unlocks healthy joints, bones, and muscles. It also protects your brain and your heart. In fact, it actually reins in your appetite and revs up your metabolism. So it's no surprise that when we surveyed globally 400,000 women, up to 80% complained that they were having troublesome menopausal symptoms. So I've named some of these symptoms the seven dwarves of menopause. They are sleepy, grumpy, 
unhappy, itchy, achy, and anxiety. So, as you can see, it's not just hot flashes. And for some women, these symptoms appear many years before menopause, and they may even persist beyond menopause for many years. And it's serious enough that it's going to affect her quality of life, her experience at work, and her relationships. So menopause is not just women's business, it's everybody's business. Another common term I hear is, I'm not feeling like myself, often mistaken for burnout or aging. But if you Google menopause and not feeling like myself, there are over 5 million hits. And according to the medical journal Menopause, there are over 60 menopause symptoms used to describe this phase. That's quite a lot. So, in the same study, they also found that pain and fatigue were the most common reasons for poorly rated perception of health. And brain fog and mood symptoms were made worse by social stresses, poor access to education, and financial resources. So the seven dwarfs of menopause and their cousins make a meaty sandwich, make a meaty filling for the menopause sandwich between career and family. Now, if you're in your mid-30s, you even might get to meet them, but you're often caught off guard because you're still having periods. Now, doctors call this phase the perimenopause, and it usually occurs five to seven years before menopause. But instead of low estrogen, the perimenopause phase is marked by erratically and unexpectedly high levels of estrogens, sometimes so high that a woman feels pregnant and bloated. And your friends may think you've turned into jackal and hide. I met my set of dwarves in my early 40s in my perimenopause. Not only did it derail my active lifestyle, it made me rethink my career. So I wished that someone had told me before I had turned 40 what to do and to prepare. And I'm not saying that menopause or perimenopause are diseases, but the roller coaster is often stigmatized, silenced, and shunned. Now, not all women will experience menopausal symptoms, yet they can still benefit from the anticipatory advice on lifestyle and medical therapies during this transition. Just like we address the changes in, menopause, in puberty and pregnancy, both perimenopause and menopause, they deserve their own moments. So I have three tips for you today that I wish someone had given me before my transition to smoothen things out. Now, if you've never met the seven dwarves of menopause, congratulations. You still have to contend the double risk of depression and dementia. And guess what? Heart disease is still the number one killer in older women. And that risk rivals that of men partly because, as Dr. Kwong said, the visceral fat gain. It's the fat around the organs that expands your waistline. It's the apple shape that's not going to keep your doctor away. But your lifestyle habits could be the antidote to keep that at bay. So whether or not you're experiencing menopausal symptoms, these three tips will still apply to you. My first tip is develop a solid handshake. Your hand grip strength is an essential vital sign. Just like when you take your blood pressure and measure your heart rate, it's a health predictor. Dynapenia, or low hand grip strength, increases your risk of early death, stroke, 
diabetes, and cancer. Now, you can measure dynopenia using a handheld device aptly called a dynamometer. And I brought one here with me today. So come and see me and my partner later to see how your handshake measures up against your peers. And for both men and women with the highest hand grip strength, they can halve their risk of depression and dementia. And you're less likely to die after a fragility fracture. So as part of staying active, make sure you train your whole body with strength training twice a week to stay strong. Second tip, what you eat can reduce your menopause symptoms. The Mediterranean diet reduces heart disease risk by 25%, with its focus on whole foods, high in antioxidants, and polyunsaturated fats. Now, if you're Asian like me and you flush with red wine, you can swap that out for what I call the Mediterranean diet with green teas and spices. So make sure you bulk up your plate with vegetables, fruits, and whole grains because that is going to help your mind and your mood will be grateful to you. Now, when estrogen flatlines, protein mimics the benefits that estrogen has on muscle growth, repair, and recovery. Yet, one in five women still don't meet the minimum requirements for protein to survive let alone for optimal health. So my suggestion is the triple ratio of one, one, one. One gram of protein per one kilogram of your body weight per day. Give that a go, because not only that may that curb your appetite, but it may offset the slow metabolism and halt the weight gain. Tip number three, don't battle your biology on your own. If you're having symptoms, find a doctor and explore all your options. Every woman's experience of menopause is unique. There are different types of hormonal and non-hormonal therapies that can be personalized to you. So now that you've heard me talk, I'd like to invite all of you to join me to walk the talk and come to my Mastering Menopause workshops and retreats where I take a deeper dive into these three points to help put you in the driver's seat to healthy longevity. So what do you say? Will you come with me to walk the dog with the doc? Um, you can follow me on my Instagram at doc underscore Lorena for more health hacks to perimenopause and menopause. So I hope today you've had a bit of fun, you had some laughs, and you've learned something new. Thank you.